God bless you and welcome to another episode of God at Work. Today, as you saw in the subtitle, we're looking at the subject of He sent His Word. Because all throughout scriptures, we see references to the Word of God and the promises of healing, promises of the miracles, and the things that He has promised He can and He will do, He desires to do. So today, we're going to be looking at some of those passages. And I have a special guest with me today, a, a pastor that I first met in 1990 in Argentina. And when I've shared testimonies in the past, and I've mentioned how I got, I got in big trouble trying to look, ask for the bathroom and I didn't get the word right. And he saw I was having trouble. But by the time they had about five beers packed up in front of me, he saw I was in trouble. So he came over to give me a hand because he did speak some English at that time. But my, so my guest today is a picture of him here. This is Pastor Josue Mendia. And he worked in Argentina with Pastor Hector Jimenez for several years, and then he ended up moving to the States. So he's been living in the States for about 30 years now. And it's amazing the things that God has done. Actually, it's over 30 years he's been in the States. But watching the things that God has done in this man and through this man, it's been kind of exciting. He was there with my beer problems, ordering beer instead of get asking for the bathroom. And he was there when, you know, what time period that God gave me the Spanish language and all these different things. And But one time he came to Canada and I was ready to, afterwards, I was ready to kill him because God had just recently given me Spanish. I didn't speak Spanish at all, hardly, more like a, a little toddler. And I didn't, I couldn't speak it. When I had to preach, God gave it to me. And otherwise it was just very broken. And he was going to do a meeting on the island, and he said, you're going to have to translate for me. Now, his English was far better than my Spanish, but it got, he said, you have to translate for me. And he starts giving some sentence that went along pretty well for the first while, and then he said a word that I had never heard before. I mean, I'd barely heard it in English, let alone in Spanish. And then he said it, and I looked at him, and he repeated it again and I looked at him again and then he repeated it again and finally he had pointed out and showed me a tattoo because he was trying to say he was saying tatuaje and I didn't know what the wet meant you know but it was a tattoo he was talking about so we've had some funny experiences as we went along so you're going to get to meet him soon but in the meantime Jerry's going to sing uh one of his new songs called unto them so Jerry unto them Unto them that fear his name Shall the Son of Righteousness Arise with healing in his wings He that spared not his own Son But gave him up for one and all Shall he not through him give us all things All things Give us all things Many are the afflictions of the righteous Many are the trials that all will face He sends His word and saves us from destruction Heals all our diseases by His grace In this world we're promised tribulations That falling seven times will rise again The Lord has said He's present And will heal us by His mercy Deliver us and cleanse us from all sin Unto them that fear His name Shall the Son of Righteousness Arise with healing in His wings He that spared not His own Son But gave Him up for one and all Shall He not Give us all things, all things, give us all things. He 
hears our prayers and sees the tears we're crying. He knows our frame, remembers we are dust. Forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases as we come to Him and put in Him our trust. He's near to everyone whose heart is broken. And those who come to Him, He'll never turn away. As you set the Lord before you, in his right hand you'll find victory If you come to him, he'll heal your soul today Unto them that fear his name Shall the Son of Righteousness Arise with healing in his wings He that spared not his own Son Gave him up for one and all Shall he not through him give us all things Give us all things Give us all things All things Give us all So as I said, I have this guest with me today, Pastor Josue Mendia. He's been living in the States for quite a while now. But we're, we want to look at a passage in the English. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, this is in the book of Mark, chapter 2. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out into the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. So Joshua, come on in and join me. Yeah, hello, Josue, hello, Jerry. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. But it's really good to see you again because it's been a long time. I know we've had a little bit of communication here or there, but it's been a long time. But this verse is one verse that you really mentioned. It really impacts you. Share a little bit about your thoughts on this passage. Yes, you know, you know, God is the almighty God, and we all have great testimonies of his power. But um, in this passage, one of the things I, I want to share is that um, there's, there was somebody in need, you know, was a paralytic, totally in need, maybe frustrated, you know, in depression, I don't know. But God touched a lot of people because the word said that there were some men and among them there were four. So what I what I see is uh, there were some people that they saw this paralytic, they say, oh, poor guy, this, that. But among them, there were four that went you know, to, to the point where, hey, we need to do something for this guy. We can walk, we can jump, and this guy is, is really in need. And that's, I, I think that God is a, is a miracle worker. We all know that. But he wants to be glorified through us. He sent us. He sent his word, as you said before, but he also sent us to speak, to pray, to intercede. And not all the people are willing to be used by the Lord, you know, because we are human beings. No, it's too far. I'm tired. This, that. I don't know that person, whatever. But these four guys, I don't know if they know this paralytic. I don't know if they were friends or not, but they have a burden in their hearts. I think they said, hey, we need to take this guy to Jesus. We need to do it. We don't know how exactly, but we're going to do it. And, you know, when we want to help somebody, 
the enemy won't be happy, of course, as as in this uh, transmission that we were dealing since the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the best engineer ever, Jerry. Thank you so much for your help. We got the wow, Rona May, woo, the best from the best. Uh, but you know, the David did, didn't want this transmission, and so I think when I when I picture you know this scene, that when they said we wanna we wanna help you. The, the enemy may come to their mind and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? This guy is, is sick, you know, you can do anything, you know, and, and things like that. The enemy trying to oppress, to convince, not to do, don't help him, don't do anything. And, you know, there were some circumstances because when they say, we want to take him to Jesus, the first obstacle were there was a multitude, not only inside that house, but outside. So the first attempt, for them, it could be, well, we did our best, but we can't do anything else. But they have a mission from God. We want to help this guy. We're going to take him to Jesus. So the first obstacle were, okay, the multitude. So then they say, well, I think they look up, you know, because they said they discovered the roof. So when we, you cannot enter in, in the normal way, <laughs> you need to to find you know god's way god has different ways so they look up and say well why don't we go through the roof so i may see you know the enemy say no no you're crazy what are you what are you gonna do you can't do that you can take this guy up to the roof no you're, you're totally crazy i think they rebuke those thoughts you know those attacks from the enemy and they have a mission we want to take you to Jesus. That's our goal. We're going to make it. Anyhow, we're going to make it. So they came up into the roof and they, they came the enemies for sure. Saying, now, what are you going to do? You know, Jesus is downstairs. This is a roof. And they said, we want to do something for this person. We love this person and we're going to take it to Jesus. And so someone, one of them may say, hey, uh, what if we break the roof? He was, you know, crazy. You know, break a, a private property. <laughs> but I know God was involved in all this, of course. So they may say, well, but we can break it. We, we're going to restore it later. Maybe even the, the, the paralytic, <laughs> when he is healed, he come to help us to restore the roof. I don't know. But one of them said, yes, we're going to break it. And all of them were in one accord, in one agreement. And it's difficult because four people, you know, they said, okay, they make a hole and praise the Lord. They get down the paralytic, paralytic, you know, down to Jesus' feet and the Lord. So, I mean, I, he didn't say the word, but but I can see a smile from the Lord saying, hey, these crazy people, <laughs> what are they doing? I think he, he loved that faith. He loved that faith because they get into Jesus, you know. And then there was the, the, the word, you know, where the, the Lord sent the, the, the word in into, I mean, when he talked to, to the paralytic, he said, get up, take your mat and, and, and walk, you know. And, and, and it was done. It was done. I mean, we know that God in a second, less than a second, can provide a miracle he can do it but the good thing in this passage is he wants to use our lives to glorify him to be glorified but he said hey i can do it by myself but i want you to be used by me to provide this blessing and i can see that guy jumping and you know laughing and all these guys say well we did it good job and the Lord made a miracle. That's one thing that I love in this passage, Rana. Do you know something, a point that a lot of people don't think of? You know, when they say they're going to make a hole in the roof, naturally, the large majority of the people think of a thatched roof, that all you have to do is separate the straw. Yeah. Roof, a roof in that day and age, in that culture, it was like oh, yeah. tiles and cement. Right. And so it was used as another room, a party room. And yeah. so they had to break through the tile and the cement, not just push aside a little bit of straw. Pretty but incredible. It was crazy, Rona. It was crazy. Hey, let's, let's make a hole. What? <laughs> and they did it. That's right. But, you know, 
Plus, I know this when you go into meetings, you look at situations and you see the need for healing for the people. Uh, I mean, I've watched your heart for the people. You see that need and you want to do whatever it takes to see that one whole. You know, and in Mark chapter 10, verse 27, it says, But Jesus looked at them and said, With men, it is impossible, but not with God, for with God, all things are possible. So you look at situations where somebody's struggling, somebody's in need, and people could say, oh, this, that person's been prayed for for so many times or whatever, but you don't look at what's happened. You look at what the need is at. There's a picture here, a bunch of people that you're, you're ministering to, and you can see them all there expectant because they know that God is present and wanting to touch and change their lives. So here's another picture where you are actually praying for this woman. Why? Because you know that with God, nothing is impossible. How often do you run into situations, Josue, where people come needing that touch from God? And they're saying, you know, I've been in this condition like the lady with the issue of blood for all those years. Or I've been in this condition for all this time. The doctors say it's impossible. I don't know how many times now the doctor said for me, the situation was impossible, you know, many times. But with God, nothing is impossible. What do you think about those situations? Yeah, let me tell you, uh, I was thinking about, a, I think it was the best experience that, that, I, that I had. One day, one day uh, after uh, my, my oldest son, he's 33 now, but he was uh, two years in, and he got an accident and then, um, I was in the Roca Theater, you know that place, right? <laughs> I was in the church in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I was the only pastor that Sunday. So there were uh, maybe 4,000, 5,000 people that Sunday, and I was the only one, you know, to, to preach, to speak while my son was, you know, at the hospital. Well, let me tell you just one experience in the third meeting that I was preaching and praying for the people. I had such a incredible experience because all of a sudden, Rona, all of a sudden, I can say that I felt what the Lord felt for the people. I was there. You know, I look, people, they were old people, seniors, they were people from the street, you know, like, like, like uh, everybody, everybody, children, seniors, I felt so compassion in my heart that I really felt what the Lord feels when he saw somebody in need. It was only once in my life that experience, but I truly felt in my heart the love of God for those people, you know, it was in Incredible, incredible. So I was praying like it was the, the last prayer of my life, you know, like I said, I'm the one, you know, you put me here, this person are looking for you, for healing, for a miracle, and I am the instrument. You're going to do it. You're going to provide a miracle, but, but please use my life. And that takes me back to one of our first churches back in time. There was a meeting where Hector Jimenez, Pastor Hector, Pastor Hector, you know, he invited everybody and he said, well, I'm going to be there. I'm going to pray. I'm going <laughs> to preach the word. And he didn't show up. And of course, he said, Josue, you need to do it. It was, I don't know, maybe my first year in the Lord. So I was there. <laughs> of course, I was singing songs and I preached. Then I prayed for the people and, and the Lord is my life. But uh, I asked for miracles, and when I get into the multitude, I saw a, a, a lady that she was so, so mad, so mad. She was crippled. She was totally crippled, and, and, and she couldn't, you know, uh, bend over. So she was saying, I don't know why I came here, because I was eight, waiting for Pastor Hector. He said he's going to preach. He said he's going to pray. And he said I'm going to receive a miracle too. And, you know, he didn't show up. 
And so I, I said, yeah, I understand you. <laughs> I understand you. But, but I shared the word and I prayed for the people. And the Lord told me that you're healed. And she was getting even more mad. You know, she was screaming. She said, no, no, it's not so. And all of a sudden, Rona, in front of my eyes, I saw that lady that was standing still, you know, I was saying, say, praise the Lord, you know, she's really healed. And I told her, and she started, you know, are you not, blah, blah. And I said, look at you, please look at you. She was totally healed. She was, I don't know, uh, crippled for all her life. And she received a miracle because God is at work. <laughs> God provided that miracle. That's one of the, you mentioned, one of the critical points, Josue, is whether, you know, whether you've been walking with the Lord for a month, a year, 20 years, 50 years, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that we know who is the great physician. You can't right. heal anybody. I can't heal anybody. But he can use us as his hands extended to see lives changed. And people healed immediately. I love the passage in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. It says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. It doesn't say, for those who have been believers and gone to Bible college for more than 20 years, they, for them, nothing is. It says, if you can believe, all wow. things are possible. Woo! To him who believes. I believe. I believe. I love, I love this picture. There's a picture here of you praying. I think it's a father and son, I believe you said. I love yeah. this picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you can see the desperation in the father's face. Correct. But you can see you're putting the same desperation in to seeking God, knowing that with him, all things are possible. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, it, it was, uh, there are some meetings and some prayers that I don't know I feel it's, it's the last prayer of my life this is this is the time this is the person this is the prayer he or she needs and I'm the instrument so sometimes I, I you know uh, put all my effort all my energy all my faith you know and that was one of the of the cases where I was interceding for for that uh, young man uh, his father got a burden for him and I was, you know, interceding, you know, with all my heart because that's that's what we need to do. And, uh, and you know, uh, when, when you mentioned uh, Mark 10, 27 and also Mark 9, 23, um, I love these passages because we all know that for God, is, he can do anything. I mean, it's nothing impossible for him. We know that but mark 9 23 puts us in a level where if we believe the things he can do we can do as well that's that's wonderful i mean and even jesus said well if you believe in me you're gonna do greater things because i go to the father so that's that's amazing you know Believing in the Lord, believing in the Word, believing in His promises, change really change our lives and may change thousands or even millions of of lives. So He puts us in the same level. I can do everything, but if you believe, you can also do everything in Jesus' name. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. Amen. But it's got to be Him strengthening me to do it there's times where i have been very sick very sick and yet god has chosen to use the weak vessel to see these lives changed but it's because we know that he's the one that does the work you know there's a, a lady right now she's a twin of the lady that goes to church where i'm at and she's fighting with cancer right now and i think it's so important that she knows where she's got to fix her eyes, she knows in who she has to believe. She knows that there's nothing more important than keeping her eyes fixed on Jesus. Her name is Rosemary. Keep her in your prayers, please, because Rosemary is believing and she is doing everything she can to reach out and believe his words and his promises.
You know, there's a song that Jerry sings that I just love. It's called More Like You. I want to be more like you, Lord. Amen. You know, it talks very much about the importance for each and every one of us in every step of our life, in every word that we speak, in every step that we take, to be more like him and to get rid of everything that hinders that. So, Jerry, could you please sing more like you? Take these things that hinder me Take my pride and my vanity Help me understand you Teach me how to love you and Won't you help me to be more I want to be more be more like you, Lord. I want to be more, I need to be more like you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Take myself and hypocrisy. Let me live in simplicity Help me burn my bridges And live the word within me Lord, please help me to be more, more, more I want to be more, I need to be more like you, Lord I want to be more, I need to be more more, more, more I want to be more I need to be more like you, Lord I want to be more I need to be more like you Take my heart and emptiness Deliver me from all worldliness Take the chains that bind me Put your arms around me And then please help me To be more, more, more I want to be more I need to be more like you, Lord I want to be more, I need to be more More, more, more I want to be more, I need to be more like you, Lord Yes, I want to be more, I need to be more More, more, more I want to be more, I need to be more like you, Lord I want to be more like you Yes, I want to be more I need to be more like you, Lord I want to be more I need to be more More, more, more I want to be more I need to be more like you, Lord Oh, I want to be more I need to be more like you more like you. Lord, that is my heart's desire to be more like you. And I know it's Josue's desire to be more like you. Lord. Amen. But you know, when I first met you, your son that you're saying is, is 33 years old, he was just a newborn baby. Yeah. I remember that so clearly. He was a tiny baby. And, and you were, you know, I'd asked you what you needed for the baby. And you mentioned 
something that you really needed. Except you gave me the brand name. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea what a coiner was. <laughs> yeah. What is this? A coiner. I thought I had to start asking, what's a coiner? Thinking the coiner was like the word for what it was, but it was, it was the brand. So I'm looking all over trying to find out what's a coiner. But I finally <laughs> found this little little dryer for his clothes because you know he had to wash it and dry everything and you didn't have the means to do it. So it was so fun. But he was and you just said he's 33 now. That's how long I've known you. 33, yeah. Because he was just he broke, a newborn broke, baby. Broke his leg with two years. He broke in two halves his leg. Wow. So it was terrible. But, you know, with tears in my eyes, but in obedience, I went all day long. I mean, at the Roca, at the church, ministering that day. And that's the only thing I could do. I can do anything for him. You know, there was a physician. My wife, Analia, was with him. I couldn't do anything else but go preach the word and, and pray for the people. That's why uh, you were mentioning something that when, when you pass through trials, sicknesses, etc., we are so sensitive because now we know what pain means. <laughs> Before we have any of those problems, infirmities, sicknesses, we, we just pray, oh, I'm going to pray for you. But when we are dealing with the pain, we are dealing with, with the struggles of, of, of an infirmity, and then we trust God during that sick sickness or, or after that, you know, we can be used in a mighty way for the Lord. It doesn't mean Amen. that I would say, okay, Lord, send me more problems. <laughs> so, no, no. But it, <laughs> no, 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 no. When problems we, come, we are ready to bless people. That's the only thing we can do. And we, we do our best for the people and the Lord will do his best for us. That's right. Do you time? mentioned he broke his leg in two pieces. You don't know it, but I am just getting through a major uh, accident with my leg. I broke my leg and ankle bone, both leg bones and the ankle bone, in nine places. Woo. They had to operate and put metal plates in and everything else. So uh, believe me, I understand. That's, That's for sure. But you know, you were we were talking about your wife. There's a picture here of you and your wife, Analia. And Analia, she is also a very gifted minister. But Six. you've been married, I believe, for 38 years. Is that correct, Josue? She's 60. It doesn't look like 60, but <laughs> no, no. Just I'm allowed say. to say so. I'm allowed to say so. <laughs> I say we joy. Hey, well, never... Analia, you can't get mad at me. He did it, not me. But you've been married for almost 38 years? 38 years, correct. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, she's as beautiful today as she was when I first met her. Yeah. She's you know, she hasn't aged. I won't say, you know, whether you have or not, but she hasn't aged at all. But yeah. anyways, it's really been a blessing having you with us today. And I'm going to ask, could you please pray for those that are listening and pray, you know, just as we close? Okay. Thank you, Lord, for, wow, this wonderful, wonderful program. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful love. Thank you for, for Rona. Thank you for Jerry. Thank you for all the people involved in this program. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for your word. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your power. Lord, we know that now there are many people watching this program. Many of them are in pain, maybe sick, maybe destroyed under depression. We don't know, but you do know their condition. Yes, Please, Lord, bless them. Bless them. Use this program. Use this prayer. Use these cameras. Use everything to bless every single viewer in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And even and even do the impossible, Lord. It, even do what, what the doctors uh, cannot assure. It, even do what 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 they when they say it's impossible, please change that word for it is done in Jesus' name, in my name, it is done. Please, Lord, revert every every condition in Jesus' mighty name. We take authority and we rebuke every single spirit of infirmity, every single spirit that is against these people. Now they are free in Jesus' mighty name, free indeed 
in Jesus' mighty name, we declare that we believe that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And remember what the scripture says, by his stripes, we are healed. Not we might possibly be, might not, it might happen one day or one person, but it's we, you are healed. Remember that. Yes. Well, Jehoshua, thank you so much for being with us. Really, I really appreciate it. And I'm just going to close here and we'll see you in a few minutes. If you've been touched by this and blessed by this and you would like to sow into this ministry, please feel free to do so. Jerry will put the details up on the screen so that you're able to. And in the meantime, God bless you and I'll see you next week. Unto them that fear his name Shall the Son of Righteousness Arise with healing in his way Spared not his own son, but gave him up for one and all. Shall he not through him give us all things? Give us all things. Give us all things.